How we doing? architectural tour. I'll do my best to tell you as much as I know about it. the great city of Chicago. We started 1837. That's when we became a city. How many people lived here then? 3,000. How many people live here today? Well, if you ask the guy on my last tour, he said too damn many. Maybe so, but uh, 2.79 million make up the city of Chicago. There are 10 million in the metro area, making us the third largest in the United States. Anybody from Houston, Texas? Okay, all right. Houston is soon going to become the third largest. If you're on a railing, sir, you can't, you can't be up there. Sorry, yeah, they don't let you do that. It's kind of how it goes. It's the no, no standing on the railings and the, the chairs. But 1837, Chicago becomes a city. Today, we're the third largest. Not for long, Houston will soon overtake the size of the city of Chicago. Our first permanent non-indigenous settler that was here long ago, 1780. His name is on that bridge right over there, Du Sable. Jean-Baptiste Point Du Sable is his name to be exact. His mother is African, father is French. She's born in Haiti. We don't know much about him, but we do know that he was a fur trader that lived here for about 20 years, from 1780 until 1800. He moves away in 1800, and three years later, the U.S. government, look off to your right where you see this building with the dome on top, right there in 1803, that building was not there, but there was a military fort there called Fort Dearborn. It plays a substantial role during the War of 1812. I don't know if you've seen there's a flag that flies here in Chicago. It has four red stars and two blue stripes. It's our city flag. The first red star on that flag represents Fort Dearborn. That sat right over there in 1803. 1818, Illinois joins the Union. We become a city, like I said, in 1837. Now let's talk about the building that sits where Fort Dearborn sat in 1803. It's a great example. Don't worry, you're going to see it again. It's just going to be off to the left in a minute because the captain's spinning the boat. It's behind you right now. It'll be back in a second, I promise. It's called the London House Hotel. It's a five-star boutique hotel. Anybody stand there? It's a nice hotel. If you're not staying there, you still want to go, you can take the elevator all the way up to the roof. There's a rooftop bar and restaurant up there, real nice, real nice. Drink's a little pricey, but that's okay. You're considering popping the question to your significant other, that's great. You can buy the London house where they'll rent you the entire rooftop. They'll sell you a giant bottle of champagne. They'll even hire a photographer for you. If you buy the package, whatever you do, make sure the person on the other end of the question says yes. Because the package is $10,000. You know, I promise. Now this style of architecture done by Alfred Alshuler in 1923 is called the Beaux Art style of architecture. It's described like this. Notice the bottom half and the top half decorated with decorative, uh, decorative ornamentation and you got these Corinthian columns. In the center here you got a bunch of windows that are symmetrical, a stack of floors in between the two decorations. That's Bose Art for you. Now guys, you're going to see the five tallest buildings in the city of Chicago. Anybody know the tallest in our city? Shout it out if you do. She's from Chicago. I know because she called it the Sears Tower. It is the Sears Tower. Today we call it the Willis Tower. It's the tallest in our city. What about number two? Look to the right. The most political building in our entire city, that's for sure, because of those letters that are up there. Trump International Hotel and Tower stands at 1,389 1, feet in the air. It's the second tallest in Chicago. It's the seventh tallest in the United States and the 33rd tallest in the world. It was completed by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. The guy, actually, that built the tallest building in the world designed this one. What's the tallest building in the world? What's it called? Burj Khalifa. You want to know how tall the Burj is without having to go to the UAE? Look up at the top of Trump up there. Put another Trump on top of this one, you would have the height of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. I know. Wow is what I said, too. 1930s, there's a German immigrant that comes to the United States. His name is Mies van der Rohe. He brings with him this style of architecture you see to the right. 
it's called black box modernism or the international style of architecture. He believes less is more. And then get your cameras out. Corn cob tower alert off to the right. The most photographed buildings in our entire city. If you tell me they don't look like corn cobs, I'm going to tell you to go see your optometrist. That's for sure. That's what it should be. But the corn cob towers were designed, completed in 1959. The buildings went up in the 60s. What you got here is 